Uh, my name is Axel Jensen, and this is Axelology. Hey, it's for Apple. Huh? What's that? I guess a brief description of what this channel uh, is going to be is um, I was trying to teach my cousin the alphabet. What happened? What happened? Uh, oh. oh. <laughs> a is for Apple. <laughs> And I thought I was bored, so, so I, I just got to cut out this letter. And uh, this letter I hooked to a stepper motor. And they got a little coupler here and a jog knob is what this is called. And you can see all I did was just drill right through this thing. I didn't even drill, I just stuffed these screws right through there and hooked them to this jog knob. And then uh, the tricky part is getting this motor to run. But you could use any motor, you can use anything. <laughs> Uh, and this episode is going to be over creating this a toy back here, right there. The parts we're going to use are a DC motor. Hi, also. So the parts we're going to use are a DC motor, a couple wires. I have a bench power supply, um, but you could use a 9 volt. Um, it's not going to last long for this size of a motor, but you could use it. Right, Mila? <laughs> yeah? You want to see it? <gasps> this is it. First things first, is we have our motor, okay? For the most part, DC motors are, are very similar. I mean, it's just positive and negative, and you hook it up to a power source, and it spins. So, in our example, uh, I mentioned a 9 volt. So this side is the positive side, so that terminal is positive, and this one is negative. So, if we touch these, all right, we can see that thing spin. We have our DC motor, and the problem is when this thing sets on the table, it wobbles around because of this piece protruding out. So what we're going to do is we're going to 3D print a cup that kind of sits on this and grabs it and sits flat on the table. That way, when this thing spins, it doesn't just do this on the table and fall over. And remember what I showed you earlier where we have the motor and what this will do is it just sits on here like so and it'll sit nice and flat now versus like that. And this is where the A will sit and uh, we will end up controlling that through a button. And I had some of these laying around and what they are is they're a, a do-it-yourself joystick kit for a Raspberry Pi or Windows or whatever. It's just USB, um, but it's a kit you can put together and it comes with this case and it's nice. But I actually tried to find these on Amazon um, and I couldn't find them anymore, but nonetheless, I have them laying around. Um, they come with a pack of buttons like this and they just come wrapped up and this one's from a blue kit. Obviously, I still have extra buttons from another kit that I bought. So this is what we have, all right? This has two wires on it and basically when you press this button, these two wires get jumped together and that's the way the circuit works. And so when the idea is that when we press this button, uh, our motor will turn on. And so what I did was I 3D printed this little thing that we can set this in and I'll solder some wires up and then hot glue this so it doesn't uh, take any of the load on the wires and then I'll kind of glue this thing probably in here just so it stays and it's something that she can press. We're gonna cut down here and just cut this connector off and then We're just gonna cut these off and solder right onto the button. Okay, so I'm gonna solder this <clears throat> uh, once I get the other one connected. We are soldered up. And so I'm gonna actually add some hot glue on here. Just to take, <clears throat> so that way if the wires are pulled on at all, it doesn't actually pull on the solder joints. I had this friend once, uh, 
that would master the hot glue with soldering. And uh, it's not conductive, so uh, he would just take these people's boards in their cash registers anytime they had a problem, if he had to resolder something, he would uh, totally just drench everything in hot glue. And then he would uh, take a can of air upside down and just fire it on this and it just freezes the heck out of it. So what we've got here is our duster. Just hold it upside down. <laughs> That'll freeze your fingers off. <laughs> Woo. And there we go, frozen. So now that this gets pulled on, it's just getting pulled on the hot glue. And there we go. So now that we have our button and it's all soldered up and ready to go, what we need to do is we need to test these ends. And you do that with a multimeter. This one's a nice one, but you can get them for super cheap. And all you need is continuity mode. And that means that this will test any two wires touching together. So if I touch this point and this point on the same wire, obviously these wires are touching. So what we want to do is hold the wires on these ends and then press this. And when you press it, it jumps those two contacts together when you press this. So we've already shown what happens when we take the battery. Negative, positive to our motor. That's the view of our, our motor from the top. And we stick our negative and our positive ends together, this thing spins. So what we need to do is put a button in front of that. So actually we're gonna leave those negative wires together and we're gonna interrupt this positive wire. Now you can do this on either one, it, it doesn't matter. So we have our button, let's draw it from the side since uh, this thing will press down and so when this button presses down, we have our two contacts that come out of that button. And what we'll do is we'll run the positive side of the battery into one side of the button. And then we will run the other side of the button out to the motor. And when this button presses down, it connects these two together and fills this gap. And that's what allows electricity to flow through. So what we're gonna do is our, take our motor and we're gonna take our negative end and hook it up to the battery with these alligator clip wires, okay? We are going to interrupt the positive side with the button. So we'll take our button and we're gonna take one wire and hook it to the motor and we're going to take either wire and hook it to the motor. And then we'll take the other wire. And it doesn't matter which one, because the point is that when this is pressed, these wires become connected. So now that we have this, we're going to hook this to the battery. Okay, so now when we have this hooked up to the battery, and we press this button, we have a running motor. And that is the basis of our toy. So our last step is to, I'm gonna take this tape off, to attach our A. Now, I wanna mention that these uh, couplers, this is from a site called Open Builds. They make a lot of great stuff. Um, and then it's just got some Allen screws that tighten uh, onto our spindle. And our spindle has a flat side and so we can just uh, tighten those screws up on it. And this jog knob also is provided by Open Builds. I shouldn't say provided by, I bought it through Open Builds. Um, and then this is from a toy uh, that I found. 
uh, just it had laying around. So um, just stuff laying around. If you want, you can go to Ace Hardware and find some aluminum tubing that would fit this. Um, it really didn't fit in here. I kind of jammed it in and squished. Um, and I, I left a little wobble in there. I felt like that was adding to the experience. And then this coupler actually is a spring and it bends as well. So we're gonna go ahead and connect those. Turn this on the side. <laughs> and so that concludes our toy uh, obviously it's a very simple toy and the point is that it's easy to make a circuit and make something spin uh, I obviously had this stuff laying around so it was easy for me to throw it together and uh, this foam core you can buy at any hobby store um, the motor you can get off Amazon, just search DC motor. There's a bunch of small motors that, for, uh, that are for RC cars, um, but the spindle on them is so tiny that uh, it really isn't demonstrable. So I use this big motor. Uh, I had a bigger project in mind when I bought this motor and it's just been sitting in my garage for quite a few years. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Oh my, oh my. <gasps> um, the freaker. Look right here. Welcome to Axology. Welcome to Axology. Ah! What? Oh, oh hey. <laughs>